Under A, we have five names for science and technology. Here's John Aiken. Trained as a physician, he contributed to the fields of botany, geography, songwriting and poetry, literary criticism, biography, medical studies, prison reform, and education. He also served as editor of the liberal monthly magazine from its inception in 1796 to 1807. Nathan Appleton was a merchant, manufacturer, financier, politician, and philanthropist. He and his partners founded the town of Lowell, Massachusetts as a textile center for weaving cotton. This was 1826, and the factory system in Britain was at its worst. It has been called worse than southern slavery for the life that it provided to its workers. Thomas Jefferson, a slave owner, tried to keep factories out of the USA entirely. Nathan was aware of Britain's social problems and strove to make America's mills better. He wrote, The contrast in the character of our manufacturing population with that of Europe has been the admiration of most intelligent strangers. The effect has been to more than double the wages of that description of labor from what they were before the introduction of this manufacture. Elizabeth Cabot Carey was raised and homeschooled as a Unitarian in Cambridge, Massachusetts. As an adult, she met and married Louis Agassiz, a widower who was already famous as the geologist who first proposed the Ice Age. Elizabeth was a scientist herself and at age 47 accompanied her husband aboard the Hassler on a science expedition to Brazil. She published two books on natural history and a biography of her husband. She was also a founder and honorary president of Radcliffe College. She shares this tombstone with her husband. It's made from a boulder taken from a glacial moraine near his hometown in Switzerland where he had his first look at Ice Age evidence. Uh, the picture on the right is to see if you're still awake in the San Francisco earthquake of 1905. A statue of Louis Agassiz at Stanford University toppled and fell 30 feet to the ground. Oaks Ames and Blanche Ames Ames. That's not a typo. The uh, UUA was founded in 1961, so you don't expect to learn that a UU member was the daughter of a Civil War general. But Blanche Ames was from a long-lived family. Her father, Adelbert Ames, became a Union Army general at the young age of 28. He fathered her at 43, and he was the last surviving Civil War general when he died in 1933 at the age of 97. Blanche Ames was an artist, inventor, writer, and a prominent supporter of women's suffrage and birth control. She graduated from Smith College and promptly married Harvard University botany professor Oakes Ames, no relation. Blanche was rich, but Oakes was richer. His grandfather was nicknamed the King of Spades, and he had made a fortune selling shovels for the California Gold Rush and for the railroads and then for the Union Army. The happy couple became Unitarians and attended the Unity Church of North Easton. They had four children and built a beautiful stone mansion and a farm at Borderland, their 1,500-acre estate. Today, it is Borderland State Park. Oakes wrote scholarly books on orchids, and Blanche illustrated them, example, on, uh, on this page. She has a lovely orchid named after her, example, on the right. Blanche has a studio at Borderland, and her art also included portraits in oil and political cartoons. Blanche was a deeply political Republican, but at the leading edge of the liberal issues of her day. She championed votes for women and was a co-founder of the Birth Control League of Massachusetts. When a ban on distributing birth control information was upheld, Blanche encouraged mothers, mothers to teach birth control methods to their daughters. She created formulas for spermicidal jellies and provided instructions on how to make a diaphragm by using everyday objects like a baby's teething ring. However, she quit the Birth Control League in protest after a fundraising advertisement. In the advertisement, the League used the fact that 250,000 babies had been born that year to families on welfare 
to persuade taxpayers to support birth control. Blanche stayed active throughout her long life. At age 80, she published a biography of her Civil War father, defending him from a charge made by John F. Kennedy in Profiles and Courage that he'd been a carpetbagger as governor in Mississippi. At age 90, she obtained a patent for her invention, the anti-pollution toilet. Well, what can we learn from the Ames family? Along with giving us good practice in controlling our envy and giving us a good example to follow in staying involved in life, I think they show that at least some of the 1% are trying to pull their weight. Life cannot give a 1,500-acre estate to everyone who writes books on orchids and teaches, even at Harvard, but the Ameses worked to make the world a better place. Ralph Asher Alpher. What would make a strong finish for the science section? How about a man who described the whole universe? This is Ralph Asher Alpher, the map maker for the Big Bang. The picture at top is an artist's conception because, darn, there is never a photographer there when you want one. The bottom picture shows the expansion of the universe. However, Ralph's map was made out of solved math equations and graphs. For decades, poor Ralph had a recognition problem. He had to turn down a full scholarship to MIT and ended up at George Washington University in DC and John Hopkins in Baltimore. Now, that wasn't a bad thing. He did vital science for the Navy to the point where they wouldn't let him enlist in World War II, but he had to do it secretly. Then he got George Gamow as his doctoral advisor. Gamow was respected for his work in quantum radioactive decay, and he was also a popular science writer with many bestsellers. I read 123 Infinity as a teenager, and I found it wonderful. Gamow wanted to learn what Einstein's equation said about the start of the universe. He needed someone who could do math that he couldn't, and he chose Ralph. Here is one of the most important science papers of all time in its entirety. It's called The Origin of Chemical Elements. Alpher and Gamow submitted it to the magazine Physical Review, April 1st, 1948, in the Letters to the Editor column. Thanks to high energy measurements and cyclotrons and other data, Alpher could deduce the temperature when the wild hot energy of the Big Bang allowed protons, electrons, neutrons, and atoms to form. He could predict the relative quantity of elements in the young universe, and fortunately it matched what Cecilia Payne had already observed, mostly hydrogen, with small fractions of other elements. Now, the paper wasn't perfect. We now think that only hydrogen, helium, and lithium formed in the Big Bang. Heavier elements form within stars by fusion and get distributed back into space when stars go nova. Elements up to iron can form in a normal nova. Heavier elements like gold and uranium need a supernova. Since we have those elements on Earth, we know that our star system formed from the dust of a supernova that exploded over five billion years ago. As Joni Mitchell said, we are stardust. I don't know if Gamow had April Fool's Day in mind when he added his friend Hans Beta to the list of authors. That made it the Alpha Beta Gamow paper, Alpha Beta Gamma, the Greek ABC. That was pretty funny for a 44-year-old Gamow and 42-year-old Beta. It was less funny for 27-year-old Ralph, who did all the math and was still trying to make a name for himself. It got worse when Beta did publish his own important papers on cosmology. One reviewer got it backwards and said that Beta and Gamow had invented the name Alpha as a joke. Ralph kept doing math and predicted the existence of the cosmic microwave background radiation, the CMB. But his work wasn't well known. When CMB was found by radio telescopes in 1964, the astronomers got a Nobel Prize. Ralph was like, as predicted, you're welcome. Sadly for Ralph, credit for his theory at first went to a group at Princeton, and when credit was restored to John Hopkins University, most of it went to Gamow. Well, that mistake still sometimes happens, but not often. Ralph has his recognition. 
He received this Medal of Science Award from President George W. Bush to Ralph A. Alpher for his unprecedented work in the areas of nucleosynthesis for the prediction that universe expansion leaves behind background radiation and for providing the novel, the model, for the Big Bang Theory. Thank you, Ralph.